This video is all about simplifying algebra and this is an example of the type of GCSE question you may well come across that I'm going to deal with in this video. Write the following expression in its simplest form and we've got 5x add 3y add 2x add 6y add 4. So I'm going to quickly go through this one now but then I'm going to go through all the different scenarios you might come across starting with the very simplest cases and I'll do all of those in a little bit more detail than this first one. So this first one is all about gathering like terms. We have terms that contain x's, terms that contain y's and a term that contains only a number. So we start by getting the x's together. 5x and then add 2x gives us 7x. Then we can move on to the y's, we'll get those together. 3y add 6y is 9y and then we've got that 4 on its own. So the answer then is 7x add 9y add 4 and that's it that's as simplified as we can make it. So algebra is about using letters to represent numbers and that can be useful for lots of reasons for example when solving complex problems and what we're practicing with these skills is the language of algebra to make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. So these are the other questions I'm going to go through and I've put the timings below as well so you can just jump to any particular type of question if you want. Now, if you really want to improve your maths, you need to practice your maths, but you also need feedback on that practice to know if you're doing it right or wrong. And you also need to be practicing questions that are the right level of difficulty for you. So there's no point doing things that are too hard or too easy. You want just the right stuff. You're also gonna need a bit of help when you're stuck. And guess what? You can get all of that over at my website, mathskitchen.com. We've got automatically marked practice GCSE questions that are personalized to you to help you get the grade that you want. So if you haven't already done so, do head over there, mathskitchen.com, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, let's have a look at another question then. Write the following expression in its simplest form. B add B add B add B add B. So in this question, we've got one lot of B and we're adding another and then another and so on and there are five of them in total and when we have five lots of something we just say five of that thing five cats five people five pens whatever okay so here we do the same we just say 5b and we write it like that 5b that's our way in algebra of saying five lots of b or five times b so a number followed immediately by a letter means we're multiplying the letter by the number 3x just means 3 times x or 3 lots of x. Sometimes we'll have more than one letter, for example 2xy, and here we're just multiplying them all together. So that means 2 times x times y. And you see we write the x's in that unusual way, and that's because the x and the multiplication symbol look the same. So to avoid confusion in maths, we write the x's like this so that it looks different to the multiplication symbol. Write the following expression in its simplest form, 3 times 5b. 5b just means 5 lots of b, or 5 times b. So we could think of this expression as 3 times 5 times b. 3 times 5 is 15, so this is 15 times b, which we would write like this, 15b. In effect, all you have to do is multiply the coefficient, that's the number in front of the letter, by the other number. For example, 6 times 2a would be 12a. If these were in a different order, say 4a times 6, it's the exact same thing. We just multiply the 4 and the 6 together to give 24a. What about if there are no numbers and you're just multiplying letters together, like a times a times a times a? Well, here we use the laws of indices. So that would be a to the power of 4 the four just representing the number of times we multiply by a. x times x times x is x to the power of three, or x cubed. We're multiplying the x together three times. Let's look at a question that involves addition and multiplication. So this is a really important type of question, both because it's often asked in GCSE exams, but and because it helps us understand the notation a bit more. We have a run of additions and a run of multiplications. 
And when we've got a mixture of operations like we do here, we've got addition and multiplication, we have to do them in a particular order and we carry out the multiplication before the addition. Some people use the phrase bid mass to help them remember the correct order. The multiplication part is y times y times y. That was three of them and they were multiplied. So it's y to the power of three or y cubed. And when we're adding variables, the number of letters you have goes in front of the letter. So in this case, it would be four x. So multiplying letters together, the number of letters you have becomes the, the little index number and adding letters together, the number of letters you have goes in front of the letter. So if you had something like this, a add a add b times b times b times b. First off, it's important to read the question carefully because it's easy to miss that some are being added and some are being multiplied. But the multiplication part will simplify to b to the power of four. There are four of them and they're being multiplied together. And the addition part will simplify to 2a. We are adding two a's. So the whole thing is 2a add b to the power of 4. Simplify the following expression by collecting like terms. And we've got a add 5a minus 2a add 3a. All the terms in this expression are what we call like terms. They all contain the letter a and only the letter a. So simplifying these is a nice straightforward process. We just need to collect all the a's together. We're counting up how many a's we have, in other words. So we have an a at the start, that is 1a. Um, and when, because when we have one lot of something, we don't write in the one, we just say the letter. But I'm gonna write the one in here just to make it clearer. So we've got 1a and we're adding 5a. That takes us up to a total of six lots of a. Then we're gonna subtract two lots of a. That takes us down to four lots of a before finally we add 3a. That's gonna take us up to seven lots of a or 7a. So to get that seven, I've just done one, add five, minus two, add three. So let's look at an example that includes different letters. There are three different like terms here. The terms only containing the letter X, the terms only containing the letter Y, and the terms with no letters at all. And with these questions, I find it really helpful to highlight the different parts. Or if you don't have a highlighter, you can just circle them in different colors. I'll do the X's in pink and the Y's in green. Now when I do that, I'm also including the sign in front of the number. So negative 2X, positive Y, and so on. Let's deal with the X's first. We have 7X at the start, and then we're subtracting 2X. That gives us 5X, just 7 take away 2. I'll deal with the Y's now. We've got positive 8Y, and then an add Y at the end. Don't forget, when a term doesn't have a number in front of it, it just means there's one lot of it. So this is 1y. 8y add 1y is 9y. And then finally, we'll deal with the numbers. Well, we've just got the 4 on its own. It's not having anything added or subtracted to it. So the whole expression then is 5x add 9y add 4. We can't simplify any further than that. We have to keep the x's and the y's and the numbers separate. Simplify the following expression, 2y minus 3x, add 5x, add y. We have two different like terms here, the terms only containing x's and the terms only containing y's. I'm gonna highlight those in different colors and I'm gonna make sure that I also highlight the sign in front of the letter. So the negative 3x, positive 5x, positive y at the end. And I'll write in the one there to show that it's one y. So let's start with the y's then. We've got 2y at the start and 1y at the end. That gives us 3y. And then the x's, we've got negative 3x at the start and we're adding 5x. That gives us 2x. You could think of it as starting at negative 3 on the number line and moving up 5 places. So that would take you to 2. So the whole expression, when we've simplified it, is 3y add 2x. Sometimes you're going to need to simplify expressions involving different powers of a variable. So let's look at one of those now. Simplify the following expression. x squared add 5x add 3x add 8x squared add 1. 
In this expression, we've got x's, but we've also got x squared and a number all on its own. And it's really important to remember here that x squared is a different term from an x. x squared means x times x. So we keep them separate as if they were different letters. So let's do what I always do and highlight the like terms, the x's, the x squareds, and the number. And we'll use a different color for each. We've got one lot of x squared at the start, and then we need to add 8x squared. That gives us a total of 9x squared. Moving on to the x's, I've got the positive 5x, add the 3x, which gives me 8x, and then finally we have 1 at the end. So the whole expression is 9x squared, add 8x, add 1, and that is fully simplified. We can't put any of those terms together. We keep the x's separate from the x squareds, separate from the numbers. And it's very similar when we have situations like this. Collect like terms to fully simplify the following expression. B, add 3AB, add 9A, add 4AB, add B. This expression contains terms that have AB, which means A times B, some that have just an A and some that have only B. And it's important to note that terms with different letters are not like terms. So we're going to keep them separate. So the A, Bs go together, the A's go together, and then finally the Bs will go together as well. Other than that, you simplify this in the same way you would any other expression. And I always start with the highlighting. I'll do the A, Bs one color, the A's another, and the B's another. So we've got 3AB and then add 4AB. That gives us 7AB. We have that 9A on its own, so there's nothing we need to do with that. And then finally, we have B, add another B, which gives us 2B. So the whole expression simplified is 7AB, add 9A, add 2B. What about, though, if we were multiplying different letters together, like in the following question? Simplify the following, 7Y times 3Z. Here we need to multiply two terms together, but they're not like terms. They're different letters, or as we say in maths, different variables. We know that 7y means 7 times y, and 3z means 3 times z. We could write it like this. And because we're multiplying everything together, we can rearrange them. The order you multiply things in doesn't change the answer. For example, 5 times 2 times 3, which is 30, is the same as 2 times 3 times 5. That's also 30. So let's rearrange this and put the numbers together at the start to give 7 times 3 times y times z. 7 times 3 is 21, so we've got 21 times y times z. We should just write like that, 21yz. In effect, all we're really doing is multiplying together the coefficients, the 3 and the 7, and then we put the variables together, the y and the z. So for example, 4a times 5b would just be 20ab. Nice and simple. Here we're being asked to simplify 3a times 2a. Well, 3a just means 3 times a, and 2a means 2 times a. So if we put all that together, we've got 3 times a times 2 times a. And we can use that idea that multiplication can be done in any order, and you'll still get the same answer. So it's really useful, that fact, in these situations. It means we can rearrange the terms in any order we want. So we'll rearrange it so that we've got the numbers at the start followed by the letters. That gives us 3 times 2 times a times a. 3 times 2 is 6, and a times a we write as a to the power of 2. So the whole thing simplifies to 6a to the power of 2, or 6a squared. In fact, all we're really doing is multiplying the coefficients together, that's the 3 and the 2, to give 6, and then multiplying the letters together to give a squared. So something like 8x times 5x is just 40x squared. 8 times 5 is 40, and x times x is x squared. Or 3b times 5b times b is 15b cubed. 3 times 5 is 15, and then b times b times b is b cubed. Here we need to simplify 8 add 4 times 2y add y add y. And with ones like this, it comes down to doing things in the correct order. 
People often use the phrase bid mass to help them to remember their correct order. I'm not going to go into detail of that here, but bear in mind that that order of operations, it applies to all the maths you're doing. It's not just this kind of stuff. But for this one, we know that we need to carry out the multiplication before the addition. So we'll do the 4 times 2y first, and that gives us 8y. So the question now looks like this, 8 add 8y, add y, add y. And it's nice and straightforward from here. We just gather those y's together. So 8y, add y, add y is 10y. So we have 8, add 10y. That's it. This is the final question. Simplify 3, add y, add y, add 5 times y times y. So we must carry out the multiplication first, the 5 times y times y, which is 5y squared. And then we'll do the addition. We have y add y, which is 2y. And then we just have the 3 on its own. So the whole thing simplified is 3 add 2y add 5y squared. That's it on simplifying algebra. Thank you and well done if you watched the whole thing. Don't forget, as I mentioned at the start of the video, if you're serious about improving your maths, then you cannot do any better than getting over to my website, mathskitchen.com where you can practice work that's automatically marked and tailored to your level and ability. I'll put a link down in the description for that. Okay, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.